Alright, um, my last video just went on entirely way too long. It was like 15 minutes to answer a question, so I'm going to try to keep this one short. Um, like I said before, I kind of get ADD and carried away, carried away when I'm making these videos. Uh, but Dan, to answer your question, um, you said you got it at 70 watts, your um, regulated mod. On an RDA, that's 0.35 ohms, if I'm not mistaken. And you said it's crazy hot. I'm going to try to break it down the best I can for you, um, but what I do want to do is point you in the direction of going on YouTube all right, and looking up Rip Trippers and watching his video with wattage and voltage. Okay, There is a difference, um, but yeah, Rip Trippers drives me nuts, he really does, but you know, some of his videos are actually really good, especially when it comes to coral building and stuff like that, and that's one of those videos that's... Um, really good, really educational. But um, the before I get started in explaining my setups here, um, people really, if you're going to get into the regulated devices, you have to get out of that tube mod mentality. And what I mean by that is you're not doing yourself any good building a point two because that's what your regulated mod will handle and cranking it up all the way alright you're just really not doing any good you know you're not getting the sufficient power that you need in order for that taint in order for it to perform the way you want it to um, as if you're vaping on a tube mod or an unregulated mod which I'll get to in just a second anyway if you're using a regulated device you want to build higher if you build higher, it uses less power, and you get longer battery life, and you're able to achieve your vaping um, level satisfaction um, with less power. Anyway, so this setup, the Boondocks box. All right, show this again. Other way. Yep, there we go. All right. This is what they call a pulse width modulated box. All right. Inside here is a little chip right there. And what that does is allows you to be able to put a potentiometer, which is that dial, on here to adjust the voltage coming off of the batteries. Okay. This isn't like, you know, the SX chips or the DNA chips or anything like that. All right, all this does is takes the power from the batteries that are ran in series, 8.4 volts fully charged, and you can just adjust the power. So where I'm at right now is about 4 volts on, um, I think it was a .32 build that's on this tugboat. And that's how I'm able to get the power out of it. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that one. <coughs> Let's try. <laughs> yeah, and be careful of the dry hits too. Huh. But um, yeah, if I went any higher on this, chances are, especially on that one, I'd be on the ground coughing. But I would have probably burnt my cotton too. Okay, this is an unregulated box mod. All right. This is in parallel. There's two different types. You have parallel and series. Parallel, all right, what you're doing is you're taking the draw from the RDA and splitting it between two batteries. A lot of people argue that what you're doing is you're doubling your amperage. You're not really doubling the amperage of the batteries. All you're doing is you're taking that load and you're splitting it between two batteries. So instead of 20 amps going to one battery, you have 10 amps going to this one and 10 amps going to that one, which results in a more efficient, effective hit, um, unless battery sag or voltage drop, whatever, whatever you want to call it. In parallel, you can actually run this in one battery. Okay, hit the button and there you go. All right, it works. And that would be similar to a conventional tube mod. Put the second battery in here and watch this. Performance goes up. Okay. That's what I'm talking about when I say, you know, when you split the load between the two batteries, it becomes more effective. It's efficient. All right. 
you have less voltage drop, more power goes to the RDA, um, and it just performs better. With a parallel box, you want to build lower, as if you are using a tube mod or something like that. This is a .11, uh, like I mentioned before. And with this particular RDA, it just likes to be built lower, which I'll get to here in just a second. All right. On a series box, on the other hand, you need to build higher. Because on a series box, what you're doing is you're doubling the voltage from the batteries on a fully charged battery set here at 8.4 volts. Okay. But the amperage stays the same. You're still at 30 amps. So, according to Ohm's law, which I mentioned before, you want to go into App Store and download the calculator. 0.28 at 30 amp or 0.28 at 0.28 ohms at 8.4 volts puts you at 30 amps. And for the majority of the batteries out there, that's the amp limitation on them is 30 amps. You got some of the 35 amps. Um, I use 25 hours primarily. Those are 20 amps. Um, but that's more than enough to you know run on a parallel box and um, also on this series box because I don't put low builds on a series box at all or my pulse width modulated boxes or anything um, so yeah got to keep that in mind parallel build low series build higher <laughs> Whew. After doing that last video, apparently I can't vape anymore tonight. But, um, yeah, so to answer your question about that, um, you may just be running too much power to that thing, dude. You know, turn it down a little bit. You know, it's not all about the most power going to the RDA that's going to produce the biggest cloud. Okay. The second part of this is about the RDA itself. All right. It's about your build. It's about the chamber. It's about your airflow. You know, it's about your drip tip size. You know, all these things take into account to the performance of the RDA with what it is that you're trying to achieve. Okay. For example, the tactical warhead. And like I said before, you know, this is it right here. You know, one piece top cap. It's got a really big bore diameter on here for the drip tip. All right, it's got um, was it, like four millimeter air holes on the side of it. All right, but it's it's a really good sized chamber. All right, and this point one one on here, you know, although being that low would be pretty warm on a standard RDA, say something like this tugboat right here. This chamber is one and a half times the size of a tugboat, so it's not going to be as warm by the time it hits your your mouth or your lungs. So the chamber size has a lot to do with it. Um, the tugboat, smaller chamber, build it a little bit higher um, for that reason because it's going to be warmer because the chamber is smaller. The drip tip isn't quite as big all right, on this anarchist cap, but this has six sets of airflow holes on each side and they're cut like that or drilled like that with the theory that it's going to take the vapor and it's going to swirl it around. That's something I think CCI started with the Militia RDA um, a year or so back. Alright, so those are built to produce clouds. Alright, then you have some that are built to produce flavor, like this Pugio. Alright, it's a tiny little RDA. This is made by Hyon. Alright, this is a VIP edition. Um, real low serial number. But I mean, even compared to the tugboat, I mean, it's it's a tiny little RDA. I mean, look at, I mean, you know. So with that said, you can't go put a .11 build on this or run it on this and expect it to perform the same way. It's going to be too hot. It's not going to give you the clouds. Plus, the airflow on this isn't nearly as big. You're looking at about three millimeters of airflow on this, you know. And this is a, a bottom airflow RDA. Um, so your RDA makes a big difference. And you asked a question, you know, people's opinion about RDAs. There is no one RDA that does everything. I've got shit, shit dude. I mean, all this here, uh, I've got. How many RDAs in here? No. I've got that. 
and my Kennedy, which is out right now. I've got a freak show sitting right here. You know, I've got a troll, I've got the tugboat, I've got this tactical warhead, I've got the Pugio, I had a Pi Square. Here's Mutation XV4, here's a Kennedy clone. You know, so really it just depends, right? It's a personal type thing. You know, what are you trying to do? You know, if you want to blow big clouds, you're going to give up flavor. If you want flavor, you're going to give up cloud production. It's a give and take, right? So there's there's a lot of really good recommendations. I will always recommend a Kennedy. That is my favorite all-time RDA. I love the Kennedy. But then you have people out there saying that Alcabron, the Twisted Messes, which are pretty much two of the same RDA, made by both of them made by Comfape. Um, you know, the Mutation X. Um, you know, I, I would say the tugboat's good. You know, this thing right here, a tactical warhead. You know, but the ones that I've shown you so far, my personal ones, you know, they're up there in a the price range. Um, this is a hundred. The Pugio is 150. The tugboat with the Anarchist cap, you're looking at about 125. You know, um, but you don't need to spend that much money to get a performing RDA, right? You know, the ones coming out of China. The Twisted Messes, the Alcabrones, the Mutation XV4s, um, the Royal Hunters. I don't know if that's coming out of China or not. But I mean, they perform also, and they're on the, they're more of, on the affordable range um, of RDAs. I just, um, I'm just lucky enough to be able to have access to these types of RDAs where I'm at here in DC. Um, but really, again, it's it's all about what you're trying to achieve out of vaping. Um, and what I would highly recommend for you is to go and do a little bit of research on YouTube. Look up um, Vaping with Twisted 420, Grim Green, um, Rip Trippers, uh, Phil Pissardo, uh, The Vaping Greek, Todd Z Sig Reviews, which he doesn't do anymore. Um, but there's a lot of really good reviews out there. Um, and you can kind of get an idea of what it is that you're looking for and purchase that RDA. Um, if it's a high-end RDA, I would recommend buying a clone. And if you're satisfied with that, and it's something you plan on keeping, then I would recommend getting an authentic. Like these here, I mean, I'm keeping these. I mean, that's the reason why I bought the authentics. Um, but kind of getting off track here and this video is running along too hopefully to answer your question man all right <clears throat> there's there's a lot of variables that go into vaping and your preferred vaping style all right I like to blow clouds but sometimes I just like to kick back and just enjoy a lot of flavor and that's why I've got so many RDAs they all do something different and they all perform differently and I like them all for different reasons so hopefully it helps man and it's not too long winded and if anybody wants to chime in and add something to it or tell me to shut up and not make any more videos because I ramble too much <laughs> you know whatever um, you know just comment below but y'all have a good night